bring in Jonathan Golub, the chief U.S. equity mm. strategist for Credit Suisse. Jonathan, great to have you with us. Good to be here. Um, how much bigger of a risk to the markets, if at all, or the economy, is the shutdown at this point? Well, I mean, long, long term, it, it's not a big deal. I mean, one of the things that we're focused on is not what happens in you know, to specific programs, but do people get their tax refunds? I mean, people spend that money, and the people who file early are, are the, you know, they, they put that, you know, back into the economy. You also have workers who are, you know, who are not going to go and, and get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking at the, the consumption. I, I kind of disagree with the point that you're making that this is to soothe. If you listen to the point made by the White House, that if this goes on for the whole quarter, that you can have a zero GDP. First of all, that is an absurd thing. You know, GDP is expected to be 3% this quarter, and to wipe out 3% GDP, it's almost the opposite. It almost seems as if people are trying to turn up the heat and, uh, and, and fight this out. So, you know, it's, so it's I, like I'm a, not sure. A bargaining chip almost. But yeah, I, there, it's are, hard there, to are some, there are some concrete ways in which an investor is impacted by this, and that is you have less data to go through. I mean, Steve Leisman did a report today on Power Lunch about the whole list of data that has not been released because of the government shutdown. And much of that data is an input into calculating GDP. So when the Fed meets on January 29th, it will have less data on which to be data dependent. Well, you want to know what the Fed's you know, plan is? Nothing. There, there's no way with the stuff going on with China and trade, the stuff going on here with an economy that's weak in China, expected to decelerate a weak Europe. The market, the futures market, is telling well, you they're out. So I, I don't, don't think, think it that they're it. going. I mean, I never thought that this. I mean, I don't think anybody thought. Who cares what I think? That it was a live meeting, but it's a meeting at which uh, the Fed chair is going to answer questions. And when the Fed chair answers questions and it answers them off the cuff. We've seen in the past, that's when the market volatility is introduced again. I mean, no question about it. <laughs> that, that's, no, no, that's listen, scary, you want more. And there's less data to, to kind of educate his opinion or to point to as he's answering the question. Sure. I mean, right now, all we're focused on is corporate profits. Sure. In three weeks from now, when the corporate profits fade, the, the input is government data. And if it's not there, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, what, what should we be expecting at this point um, of the rally? It seems like. There are some stress points at this right, point. So let me give you two positives and uh -huh. something that I'm very confused about. So the positive okay. number one is the Fed is basically done for the cycle. That's what the market believes, and I think the market's going to be right. Uh, number two, volatility, as much as we have all the stuff going on, is going to continue to drift lower. That's why the market's rallied so much. And as we have a VIX move towards 15 and below that, you're going to have a market that's going to continue to rally. It gets tougher after the VIX gets back towards 15. Then I think the, up, the, uh, the uh, trend is harder. So this is the one chart. The one that chart is the, that, that you got to understand. Chart. And what, I mean, you can see when the VIX is rising, the market's selling off. That is the whole story of the fourth quarter and why you had this pullback. And when that volatility drains out of the market, um, th then it's game time again. But the VIX is chasing, you know, it's, it's lagging. In other words, the VIX is responding to, to data that we're seeing, whether it was that China ISM or it was the U.S. ISM, I should say, it was the China data points. Um, so ultimately, if we find ourselves at 20, it's because something has changed, not because the VIX has changed. Um, yeah, but there is, there, I think there's a lagged effect on this. Hedge funds adjust their position sizes based on the level of market volatility. But they don't do it on where the VIX is today. They look at it on a rolling, you know, one month or two month basis. Yep. So if the VIX has been drifting lower, that means that over the next month or two, hedge funds are going to reflate their position sizes and they're going to be buying those NASDAQ fan kind of names that, that, that they've sold out of. So I think if you just simply have a slow drift down, it, it's like having a really strong tailwind. I don't think you need the VIX to get down to 12 in order to have more upside. Um, we're just about out of time. What, what is the one thing that confuses you? You know, there's total <laughs> inconsistency in the underlying um, earnings data. Let me just specifically, um, the earnings are, are moving towards zero for the first quarter. I mean, right now, 2.5% expected growth. The revenues are knock the lights out good, and the margins are horrifically bad based on Wall Street consensus expectations. It doesn't make sense. One of those is right. One of those is wrong. I, I think that the way you play this is an option space. Either way, this is going to be a much bigger return to the upside, or this thing is going to get ugly. I don't think you're going to get something in the middle. All right. More time needed for this. Jonathan, great to see you. Thank you so much. Jonathan Golub of Credit Suisse. I go to Pete then. Well, the, one, <laughs> the part that, that confuses me a little bit with what John's, Jonathan's laying out is we've got a lot of different things that are uncertainties. And uncertainty provides volatility. And uncertainty in the form of China, 
the trade, the slowdown, our own situation here with the shutdown and everything, I think the combination of those, Mel, is why we are still at a 20 VIX. Otherwise, right now, if, if you removed even one of those different legs, I think we'd be closer to a 15 or a 16. But I think we continue to hold some of these levels. And until we get answers, I think those levels are going to stay in the market. And we can see it. Today was a perfect example of everything we've gone through. We're up 300 down about 170 or 190, whatever it was, all the way back up to finish up 170. That is complete volatility, and people don't understand. That's, they're just looking at close to close. I'm looking at intraday, which is unbelievable. Yeah, I, I'm with Pete on this one. I've been, been wrong, but I do think the VIX should be higher. I don't necessarily agree that the Fed is out of the picture for 19. I think that's what the volatility index is saying. And given the choice between revenue growth and earnings growth, I'll take revenue growth every day. So I guess that's a good thing in terms of what Jonathan was saying. The Fed is definitely, I agree with you. I don't think the Fed is out of the picture. And even if they're out of the picture, QT is still happening, right? So that 50 billion or 40 billion, whatever the number is, it's still rolling off on a monthly basis. That is the equivalent of tightening at every meeting. Bottom line, though, back to stocks, 2019 S&P uh, EPS outlook is, is in about 2% already, based upon where we are. That's the numbers I'm looking at from, from the street. So um, you are getting this, essentially, recalibration of what companies should be trading at, or at least where their earnings are going to be. That, to me, is the biggest determinant in a world where we're without the Fed.